Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. So in this video, we're going to look into electrical quantities and IGCSE physics. And here are some of the quantities that we'll learn. Current, voltage, resistance, and power. And the structure of this lecture is first, we'll introduce the formulas and concepts, followed by work examples that help you to better understand how to apply these formulas in your exam. So let's look into current. The definition of it is the rate at which electric charge, electrons, passes a point in a circuit. So for an electric current to flow, there are two things which are required. Firstly, you need a complete circuit. They are often complemented by a set of wire that you need. And then something to push. That's an informal way of saying it, but something to push the current, which is the electric charges around the circuit. And this push often provided by cell, battery, or even a power supply. And in order to measure electric current, we have three different instruments like the analog ammeter, the digital ammeter, and also the galvanometer is specifically used to measure tiny current. So an ammeter is often connected in series. So you will learn about voltmeter later. In, um, voltmeter is connected in parallel, but ammeter has to be connected in series. And the readings of an ammeter is in amperes. That's also the unit for current. So here I want to show you how the flow of current works. So initially, scientists thought that current flowed from the positive terminal to the negative terminal. But it was later discovered that it was the electrons that move. And the electrons move from the negative terminal to the positive terminal instead. So in this case, you have to understand two things. First is that conventional current, you will see this word very often, which is the original way that scientists think the current flow is from the positive terminal to the negative terminal, whereas the electrons it move from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. Whereas in, in fact, it's the flow of electrons that causes current, all right? So here, I want to show you how to quantify current. There's a formula to do it. Basically, current is the amount of charges passed through in one second. Okay, so one ampere, meaning one column of charge, passed through the circuit in one second. Just know that and then extra information. Um, something we learned in the last chapter is that one electron is equal to 10, 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 coulomb. So just know that one ampere basically means there are tons of electrons flowing in the circuit. So let's look at some work example. A current of 150 milliampere. So milli, 1000 milliampere, just to let you know, stands for one ampere. So 150 milliampere, you can convert it to ampere for easy, easy sake. It's equal to 0 0.15 ampere. Flow in the circuit for one minute. So the question is how much electric charge flows? How many columns of charge flow in the circuit? So we can use the formulas. Um, I equal to Q over T. I is the amount of current, Q is the charge, time, T is then for time. So we have 0 0.15. We, I write in ampere because that's the SI unit. And equal to Q, electric charge is how much, what the amount we want to find. One minute, I'm going to convert it to seconds, which is the SI unit. So the Q here, if you use 60 multiplied by 0 0.15, you will get 9. Um, don't forget the unit, which is column. So that's your answers, nine columns of charge. So let's look into another quantity called voltage. So there are two definitions. First one is the work done by charge passing through an electrical component, meaning how much work is done to move this one column of charge. Definition two is difference between electrical potential between the two points. So voltage you can also call it potential different. You can use these two terms interchangeably. So voltmeter um, is this arranged and connected in parallel, whereas ammeter, what we learned just now, it is often connected in series. And there's another term for it, electromotive force, which is also measured in volt, but they are more, more frequently used and in terms of talking about electrical work done by a source, meaning the amount of uh, voltage in this source, like cell, battery, 
or even the power supply. So um, let's see how what happened. If we connect two um, batteries together, for instance, and each battery has an EMF of 1.5 voltage, and we add them up together, we're going to get 3.0 volt. And very straightforward. But do know that when you connect cell, you do need to connect properly because if you don't have a correct direction, in this case, you can see that this is not connected in the same direction. It will mean that the first and second, if they will cancel each other out. It's like this cell is pushing the electrons to move in one direction. The other one is pushing it to move in another direction. So they basically cancel each other out. So when you put these three cells together in this manner, you'll only get 1.5 volt, which is um, the voltage of this. So let's look into how we can measure voltage using some formulas. The formulas for calculating voltage is work done divided by colon. Or you can say how much work is done to move one column of charge. So the more work done you have to move one column of charge, the more current you are able to push in your circuit. So let's look into the work example. Calculate the EMF of a battery, what is the volt, that gives 60 joules of energy to a charge of five columns. So I have, just imagine that this red block stands for one column, and then 60 joules of energy is used to move every five column of charge. What is the EMF of the battery? So we know that the formula for it is work done divided by Q equal to voltage. So I'm going to do 60 divided by 5, which is 12 volt. So if we look at the answer, that's the answer, 12 volt. All right, by the way, if you're interested in purchasing the slides here, you can always um, click on the link in the description and then you can purchase that for your personal revision. Or if you're a teacher, you can use them to teach in a lesson. And that's it. So let's look into another work example. The potential difference across the lamp is 12 watt and volt, sorry, the lamp is connected for 10 seconds. Calculate how many joules of energy are transferred. Just remember that energy transferred, what we learned in chapter eight, is equivalent to work done. Therefore, they are basically asking what's the work done when a charge of, in this example, one column passes through it. So in order to do that, we just apply the formula we have learned. I equal to, oh, sorry, V equal to work done divided by Q, which is the number of charge. So I have 12 watt volt and then one column. My W would then be equal to 12 joule. Okay, so that's the work done for question A. And if for question B, when five column of charge, we can basically use the same formulas W equal to Q and 12 equal to W times 5. So W will be equal to 60 joules. All right, so next one. Um, how many joules of energy are transferred when a current of 2 A ampere flows? So now they are giving us current, but we don't have the charge yet. So what I'm going to do is that I'll use the first formula that we learned in the previous part of the video, which is I equal to Q divided by T. So that will give me, I want to find what is um, Q. So I'm going to use I times T, I stands for current. Two multiplied by T, 10 seconds is as it's given. So my Q is equal to 20 column. And then once I got what is my column, I'm going to plug the value into my another formula, like the same formula that we use, W over Q. We know that voltage is 12. Work done is what we want to find. Column is 20. So W equal to 12 times 20, which will equal to 240 joules. So that's how we solve question in IGCS physics. Sometimes you don't have um, the quantity directly. You might need to use another formulas to first calculate the value, and then you use that value to calculate the answers. All right, so let's look into another question. A circuit consists of two 1.5 volt cells. So we know that when we add them up together, they are going to have 3 volts. So how much energy does 2C of charge gain on going through the cell? Again, we are looking at energy transfer, which is work done. So we used back the same formula, V equal to W over Q. My V is 3 voltage provided by the cells. W is what I want to find, Q is 2. Therefore, W is equal to 6 joules. 
So if you look at the answers, we have six rows as the work done. So now we have gone through what, is, what are currents and voltages. So now we look into resistance. It is, the definition is a measure of how difficult it is for an electric current to flow through a device or a component. So do know that every wire, every component, they have resistance. It's just that they might vary in terms of quantity. So um, we can also say that resistance is the PD across a component divided by the current through it. Like how hard it is for the potential difference to push through current, all right? So this is a symbol for resistor. And let's look into some thing about resistors. Um, in a circuit, if your circuit has great resistance, meaning less current will flow in the circuit. If you think about it, it makes sense. That's what re resistance means. It resists the current from flowing in the circuit. And the unit for resistance is ohm. Ohm tells us how many volts are needed to make one ampere of current flow. So if your circuit is 3 ohm, meaning it requires 3 ampere, I mean, it requires 3 voltage, I mean, a voltage, uh, a circuit of 3 volt to move one ampere of charge. Whew. And let's look into the resistance formulas and how it relates to current and resistance. So the formulas that I like to use in this subject, um, I think you just have to remember one, even though two are given, is called V equal to IR. Meaning the voltages of a circuit is equal to the ampere multiplied by the resistance. So let's look into an example on how we can solve this question. A resistor allow a current of 0 0.02 to flow when there is a potential difference, voltage of 10. And what is this resistance? And in this question, there are two important values that are given, current, voltage, and we need to find a resistance. So I'll use the formulas I, I like, V equal to IR. V is 10, ampere is 0 0.02, and what we want is R. So R is equal to 10 divided by 0 0.02, which I will get 500 ohm. So that's the resistance of my circuit. So if you look at the answer, and I should get it. So let's, next up, um, another question. What is the resistance of a lamp if a current of 5 ampere first value connected to 240 volts supply? Again, I'm going to use the formula V equal to IR. 240 equal to 5R. So R will be equal to 240 divided by 5. I'm going to have 48 ohm. So another question. When... Oh, I could have write it here. So I know that Fritz's answer is 48 ohm. Second question, um, when the PD across the lamp is increased, will the current flow increase or decrease? So basically they're asking, what happened if the voltage increased? Will the current increase or decrease? According to this formula, because left-hand side has increased, therefore right-hand side must increase too. So I will increase when voltage increase. And if you think about it, it makes sense, meaning there's more push in the circuit to push the current, therefore more current flow. So another question, what PD is needed to make a current of 2 ampere flow through a 30 ohm resistor? Again, V equal to IR. V is what we want to find. 2 is our ampere, 30 is our resistance. So I'm going to have 60 volt. And that should be my answer. Great. So um, another question. Wow. A PD of 240 volt. I do know that I put in a lot of questions because I think this chapter is all about work example, whether you know how to solve the question or not, rather whether you know about the formulas or not. So you can pause the video and do the question and then replay it after you have done to make sure that you understand the topic taught here. A PD of 240 volt across a resistor costs a current of 80 milliampere. What is the resistance? Um, first of all, most, I will convert 80 milliampere into 0. 8 ampere and then I'll use the formulas V equal to IR so I have put up some states so 0 0.08 ampere okay V equal to IR V is 240 0 0.08 and what is the resistance I'll use 240 divided by 0 0.08 which I'll get 3000 um, ampere, uh, ohm and second question what PD would cause a current of 40 milliampere to flow through the resistance. Again, I can use the same formula, V equal to IR. 
Hopefully now you can see that V equal to IR is a very versatile formula that you can use in many questions. So 40 milliampere equal to 0 0.04 ampere multiplied by 3000. So you're going to have 120 volt. So let's look into some the different types of resistor that um, you learned. First one is called the ohmic resistor. It is a resistor that has a constant resistance, meaning regardless of how much voltage increase, the resistance will still be the same. This also means that its current voltage characteristic, by the way, this graph is called a current voltage characteristic. It basically shows you what is the current of a circuit when you increase voltage to a certain point. And the current voltage characteristic for an ohmic resistor will be a straight line graph so that the current through it is directly proportional to the voltage across it. Meaning the more voltage you add to your circuit by adding more batteries, the more current you will get. And that's when we call something an ohmic resistor. So I want to show you what is called a non-ohmic resistor instead. So for non-ohmic resistors, in the beginning of the graph, as you increase the volt voltage, you see that it's still a straight line, meaning current will increase. But what's the difference between this and the ohmic resistor is that until a certain point, the amount of current will stop increasing that much, even if you have more voltages in your circuit. So you can see that at higher voltages, the graph start to curve over and the current increase more and more slowly as the voltage increase. And there are some reasons on why it behaves like that. And that's because when voltage increase, um, okay, one example of non ohmic resistor is the filament length. So when you increase the filament uh, voltage, the filament get hot and glow very brightly. And at high temperature, the filament has a higher resistance, meaning it doesn't have a constant resistance. It's resistant depending on how much voltage you give. So as the resistance increase, the current doesn't increase that much. So um, again, why, is, why does this happen, right? Why, why that in higher temperature, the current just wouldn't go up? That's because when you increase the current, you're basically increasing the number of electrons flowing in the wire. And that causes the number of collision between electrons and lattice increases. So to think about it in a more logical way, um, it, you can imagine that you're walking through a a tunnel that has a lot of people and it's difficult to move through a crowd where people are moving in random direction and the same goes to the electrons too so for non ohmic resistors the current voltage characteristic is not going to be a straight line all the way it will stop um, it start to curve at one point so that's the difference between an ohmic resistor and also a non ohmic resistor so um, let's look at some questions the diagram shows the current voltage characteristic. Which resistor, A or B, has a higher resistance? So um, we know that a circuit that has high resistance means the current won't increase that much when you add more voltage. So as compared to resistor A and B, you can see that it's very clearly resistor B doesn't increase in its current when potential different increases. This also shows us that resistor B actually has high resistance because as the potential difference increases, the current doesn't increase that much as compared to resistor A. So as resistor B has higher resistance, increase, its current increases slower. So um, that's about it. Another thing about resistance is that the length of wire, length and thickness also affects its resistance. So for wire, just know that the longer the wire, the greater its resistance will be. So in this diagram here, the throttle one, let's say it has a one ohm resistance. The longer it is, the higher its resistance. Whereas for a diameter, again, the thickness is the other way around, whereas a thinner wire will have higher resistance as compared to a thicker wire. So doubling the diameter, making, making it bigger, will halve the resistance. So that's all some question regarding this. A 2 meter length of wire has a resistance of 4, ampere, uh, 4 ohm. What is the resistance of a piece of same wire? Just know that resistance of a wire increases proportionally with the length. Therefore, we can use the ratio method 
So a 2 meter length wire has a 4 ohm resistor and therefore a 20 meter length wire will gonna have 10 times the resistance of the 2 meter wire which is 40. So my answer is 40 ohm. Next up is a little bit different. Um, a 4 meter wire. So first we'll solve the first part first. So 2 meter wire has a 4 ohm resistance. So 4 meter wire is gonna have 8 ohm resistance. Second one is with half the cross-sectional area, meaning it's half um, thinner, it's thinner. So we know that the thinner the wire, the higher is resistance, and it's exactly half, meaning the resistance of the circuit will be 8 ohm multiplied by 2. So in total, 16 ohms. So that's how we solve this question. So you need to understand the longer the wire, the bigger the resistance, the thicker the wire, the lower the resistance, and they are proportional. So let's look into the last part of this chapter, electrical appliance. So if you look at the electrical appliance in your house, most uh, like chargers or power adapter, you're going to see the amount of rating on it. So just to let you know some general knowledge, a 12 watt charger, it basically means that this appliance will draw 12 joules of energy per second. And therefore, um, sometimes when we want to charge our electrical device, we pick a um, charger that has higher power rating so that it gets in more energy and it charges our phones faster. So um, there's a way to measure what's the power of an electrical appliance. We can use the formula voltage multiplied by current, P equal to VI. And because we know that energy is equal to power times time, if you want to calculate the energy instead, you can do VI multiplied by time. So let's solve some questions to help you understand again. An electrical fan runs from the 230 volt supply, the current is 0 0.4. At what rate is electrical energy transport? Again, in other words, they are asking what is the power rating? Because power rating represents how much energy you give in one second. So they're asking for power rating. And that's the first question. Second question is how much energy is transport in one minute? I'll solve the first question for us. Because they're asking for a power rating, I can use the formula P equal to VI, which is 230 multiplied by 0 0.4. And if I were to plug this into the calculator, it will be 92 Watt. So that's my power rating for this um, fan here. Second question, at what rate is electrical energy transfer, uh, how much energy is transferred in one minute? I know that I can use because 92 watt basically means it transfers 92 joules of energy in one second. So in one minute, it's going to be 92 times 60, which I will get 5,520 joules of energy. So that's my answer. So I like my unit here. And that's how we solve it. Um, another unit, uh, that's why this chapter is called electrical quantities. There are tons of quantities you need to know. Um, so the first one is, the other one is one kilowatt hour. So just know that to understand what this term means, I'll just spread it into one kilowatt an hour. One kilowatt stands for 1000 watt, okay? And 1000 watt basically means it gave out 1000 joules of energy in one second. And one hour stand, we know that there are 3600 seconds. So one kilowatt hour, when we combine that together, it basically means that you can use is a quantity of 1,000 joule multiplied by 3,600, which will get 3.6 million joules of energy. So that's another way to simplify um, electrical calculation. Um, it's way easier to let others know that, oh, I have used one kilowatt hours of energy, then you tell others I've used 3.6 million joules of energy. So that's a simple way to say that um, how much energy you use, and that's also the industry trended. To calculate energy transfer in kilowatt hour, you just have to know what is the kilowatt of the appliance and what is the uh, how much time, how long is it used. So let's look into this question. This power heater here has a power rating of 3.5 kilowatt and it is used for two hours. That's a long time, long amount of time. How much energy is transferred in kilowatt hour? So again, um, to do that, you just need to use kilowatt, 3.5K, which is 3,500, multiplied by 2, so which will get 7,000 
kilowatt hour. All right. Oh, I shouldn't have used this. Should be 3.5 multiplied by 2 because it's in kilowatt. 3.5 multiplied by 2, which will have 7 kilowatt hour. So that's my answer. Power multiplied by time. So let's look into the last question of this um, chapter. Zara tech her electric city bill for three months, and the start is three five three two five three one. The end is two six seven four seven. The electric cost sixteen p per unit. What is her bill for electric city? So let's first calculate how much um, power he, she uses. So it'll be two six seven four seven minus two five three one. It will be equal to 116 kilowatt per hour and we just have to multiply this by 0 0.16 so p stands for cent so if you do this put it in the calculator you know that it is equal to 18.56 dollar um, or pound depending on which country you're staying in so that's that's the amount we calculate and in fact this is a new part of the subject that is added to your syllabus so make sure you know how to calculate that. So let's solve some past question before we end this video. Um, one of them is ohmic resistor. The other one is filament lamp. So filament lamp is non-ohmic resistor. Basically, this question asks us to find out what, like, which graph belongs to you know the ohmic resistor, which graph belongs to the filament lamp. We know that for ohmic resistor, it has to be a straight line. So it's definitely have to be Q. And whereas for a non-ohmic resistor, it's going to be the straight line at first and then curve over. So my answer should be C. All right. So that's the answer. Second question. So this student study resistance of wire. He changes diameter and length. So describe what you need to do. What happens to the diameter and what changes need to make to the diameter and the length that would decrease the resistance. So we know that for wire, the longer it is, the higher is resistance. So if you want to decrease the resistance, you have to use a shorter length. Okay, so one A and B confirm it's not right. Changes the diameter. If you want to decrease the resistance, you have to make it even thicker. So changes to diameter should be increased. So my answer ultimately will be equal to C. Great. So what is the unit for electromotive force, EMF? which is a quantity used to describe voltages in source, like battery. So we know that is volt. Straightforward. Next question. A charge of 4.9 C flow through the lamp in 0.7 seconds. They ask us to find what is the current. So we can use the current formula. I equal to Q divided by T. So it's 4.9 divided by 0.7. We know that we have 7 ampere. And they also ask us on what is the direction of electrons flow and conventional current. Electrons flow from the negative terminal to the positive. So it should be from the left to right. Whereas direction of conventional current is from the right to left. So my answer is A. All right, last question. A student connects a 6 volt power supply to a 3 ohm resistor. The resistor is left connected. How much power is dissipated? We know that power can be calculated using P equal to VI. And do know that I don't have the current here. I have to calculate it using another formula called V equal to IR. Because I have volt and I also have resistance. So my I is going to be equal to 6 divided by 3, which is 2 ampere. And after I got what is my I, I can use that to plug that into my P equal to VI formula. I'll get 12 watt. So my answer is B. So that's the last question for this topic. Um, it has been a long video. I have, so in this chapter, we've talked about the different quantities we have, current, resistance, um, voltages, and even electrical rating. So let me know if you have any questions in the comment section, and I will try my best to answer. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.